All right, sorry for the lack of coverage. I've been away on my holidays. I'm still on my holidays at the moment, but I um, have internet now, and I've got to discuss the Dauphiné. It was very exciting. So I'm going to go through each stage by stage first, discuss the power, discuss the results, um, look at it that way, and I'm going to take conclusions from that uh, towards the end based on the Tour de France. Obviously, lots of crashes, lots of people abandoning, etc., etc. So um, very interesting race. So obviously, Danny Felipe Martinez, I reckon if you had a bet on him, you'd be coining it at the moment. Uh, but you can see the gaps are pretty big after the 11th place. Sivakov with a pretty good ride. But all these guys, a lot of them, you know, the, the favourites, Bookman, Kreisweik, Bernal, um, Roglic, all not here. Uh, so anyway, we'll go, we'll go to the first stage. So these are the stage winners, Wout Van Aert, Roglic, Formula, Chemnitz, Kuz. But you see here, it was a, it was a Jumbo Visma domination in the general classification front. Uh, so we'll, we'll go to the first climb. This is Richie Port's uh, file, so obviously it has no power, but it's just to show you the sort of general climb. So this is the first day, five watt per kilo on the climb, nothing crazy. A break had gone up the road. This is the finale, um, 35k an hour, 3%. It, it's really it's really nothing GC wise, which is why I didn't, I couldn't really bother to find anyone um, who had the power files. It wasn't really that hard of a day. Uh, while Van Aert won the final kick ahead of MP, Bernal looked quite good, but again, the, this stage, in terms of GC relevance, is, is pretty minimal. Obviously, Wout Van Aert's solid, but you knew that already. Uh, stage two was when the GC action started. So you can see here, it's a hilly day. It doesn't look as hilly just because, obviously, this is so much larger than the other one, but it, it's, it, you know, there's a fair amount of elevation for the day. Um, we'll, we'll go over to, you know, just get a see his normalized. 218 normalized, but when 62 kilos, I think that's probably about right. Um, he's tall, but obviously very skinny. Um, 2,800 meters of climbing, so a decent amount. Well, all of them's kudos. Uh, peak powers here. Um, nothing too crazy until the half an hour mark. Uh, but this was a super interesting stage. So if you didn't watch it, you know, break goes classic. Ineos get on the front. Uh, this climb they were sort of half on the front. Uh, I know you're sorry, Jumbo Visma on the front here dropped a couple people, but nothing crazy. Um, you can see here, what's Pekio 5.3. I'm going to assume most of these are right, apart from maybe Leonard Chemnitz. I think most of these seem, you know, the VAM seems roughly right here. Um, so the VAM here is 1500 VAM, 5.3 in the wheels. That sounds about right. Maybe maybe a little bit low. Uh, potentially, Bookman weighs a little bit less. Uh, but nothing nothing crazy in terms of what's Pekio wise. Um, it dropped, you know, a fair few people, but nothing crazy. But I think the biggest thing that most people took away from this was the highest level. The level of the people in the Dauphiné was potentially higher. So normally, half an hour climb at six watts per kilo, you're expecting four or five people to be there. There were genuinely like 20 people until the last kilometer. Like it was unbelievable. I would say, watch that stage. Anyone's got in front, razzed it proper. Like you know, no messing around. We're here for burnout to win. And to be honest, they just couldn't drop people. It was you know, okay, it's not a steep climb. It's seven percent. 22k an hour, the draft is decent, um, but if we look at this, it's more like 8%, 21k an hour, the draft was, you know, 6 watts per kilo for like, it was half an hour climb, and obviously the day wasn't mega hard, it was 240 normalised, which for these boys is, is literally zone 2, but, you know, midway, what's this, stage 3, stage 2, sorry, you know, you'd expect expect not that many people to be there, but the, the level was unbelievably high, um, there were accelerations towards the end here, 400 watts for the last five minutes, but the, it really sort of kicked off towards the end, 400 watts, you can see this, but it was really like the last kilometer or so was really when it started to get quite hot, uh, 460 watts, and if we take this, it's like 474 watts, which is, you know, super impressive power considering they climbed at 6 watts per kilo. Uh, Manny Bookman came third on the day, um, I really like that Manny Bookman has all his power data open, it's super interesting to see, um, but Roglic put in that kilometer eight seconds into him so you can see Roglic was obviously had a lot less a lot left over um eight watts per kilo for a minute after that sort of six watt per kilo climb and his second stage is, is unbelievable so you sort of know what you need to be able to do you want to be a tall contender be able to ride a six watts per kilo and, and launch it at the end of the stage so super interesting again but it gets better it just gets better this analysis and i'm, I'm really happy to be able to bring it to you so this is the next stage unfortunately formula who won the stage did not learn any power but um they went up the cold the madeleine which is one of the longest climbs I really use, to be honest, is, is literally like 17, 18k at 8%, um, 314 watts, so again, 5 watts per kilo. They let the brake go, so the brake went pretty early. Um, the brake fought out the climb, and the brake fought out the day. Formula went clear. He would do an absolutely mental descending to get rid of everyone on the, um, like Pierre Latour, and then rode the final climb. This is a similar climb to what they did um, in the Tour. So if you can remember on the Tour, there's Mutier. I think they literally went from... 
they went down the valley road in the tour and then straight up on the final day um but they didn't they went past lane Renwe and they went all the way up to uh valteren um, but this time they didn't they just went up most of the climb it was a pretty fast climb five percent 24k an hour it, it, which makes it potentially not sound as fast as it was but you know it, it really wasn't there's was quite a lot of high speed pass and drafting so you know the first part was toughish it was like eight percent um but this final climb wasn't actually too hard quite a lot of people ended up finishing 5.3 watts per kilo maybe doesn't show as hard as it was because the last part was pretty tough and obviously that it sort of goes up in ramps um so the last seven minutes were over six watts per kilo 400 normalized and again the last kilometer and it was puncturized this race was this mountaintop sprint and i think this could be the trend obviously a bunch of sprints very popular they happen the whole time but you think about the original back cycling everyone was on their ones you then got bunch sprints then you had mountain stages where everyone was on their ones now then you get small groups and now i think i genuinely think this could be like the end of cycling if it continues like this where you just get mountain top sprints they are so boring to watch um last minute 468 for a minute is pretty solid uh manny bookman on the day came fourth manny bookman's looking good um unfortunately um for him and for everyone in the race uh, he crashed the next day, uh, which was a, a big shame. So on this stage here, it, they finished at the same at the same place twice, but the climb used was actually different. Um, they had a descent off the Plan Bois. It was this this thing here. Apparently, it was absolutely mental, uh, and everyone was going like crashing and stuff. So was, um, anyway, this is Leonard Kemner. Leonard Kemner won the stage. Uh, we'll go into the kudos as well. Um, and this is a pretty impressive ride, actually. This is one of one of the rides I really want to go into into detail. So 400 watts. This is FTP 66 kilos. He could be lighter. I'm I'm not sure. He looks pretty lean. Um, but for sure, this is a super interesting stage. So 4,000 meters climbing. It's a proper big day out. 5,000 calories. Um, so the kilojoule burn four and a half thousand is significant. It's like a thousand calories an hour. Like you know, that's that's some serious burn. So. The break goes pretty early, I think. Uh, I obviously no TV coverage, so I'm not sure exactly when the break went. Potentially on the first climb, but the cl the first climb wasn't too hard. Again, ridden at 340 normalized, so 334 average, um, 16k up, nine percent. That's pretty solid. I think his watts per kilo are wrong. This is the only person I think is that's more like five and a half to six, maybe. Um, obviously the climb, you know, it's hard to compare exactly. But again, next climb ridden 17k up, eight percent. That seems more like right, right 4.6 watts per kilo, five watts per kilo, something like that nothing too mental uh again 300 watts up this climb again not too mental so if we if we just look at the first um you know two hours 320 normalized 4.4 watts per kilo that's pretty solid but i think what's more impressive is obviously it's stage four this and it was a hard three stages behind before even if you were in the group hatter. so he's done very well um descents obviously still very hard um lots of crashes um next climb five watts per kilo again which is looking good so you know he's 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 done a lot of work so before he gets to the climb he's already done 2700 kilojoules of work normalized power 300 watts so that's you know that's not going to ruin him but he's going to be feeling a bit rough um so on this climb this is when the real break went uh like as in when i say real break i mean it was like this is when it you know they whistled it down i said this is this is the big boys um who are going to be there and they're climbing about 5.4 watts per kilo um and towards the end yeah a little bit less but you know more or less 5.4 watts per kilo for this whole climb and that's really when the, the men were sorted out and the boys were left behind um which is again like you know for a breakaway it's super impressive the climbing speeds that they were doing just you know just to make the break not they weren't even attacked like you can see here that there were some attacks but a lot of it was just like steady tempo that they were riding through and off um so yeah super impressive by leonard Kemner already uh then the descent was you know 200 watts for 20 minutes this is a lot of spikes so that's not easy like obviously he's recovering but it's not easy and i want to sort of draw people's attention to that descents aren't as easy as people think then we go into the final climb uh it's three percent average for 16k but that's sort of like in the get gates what happens as you can see by this large speed diff differentials here it was actually um quite steep in some parts but generally so they were cruising up to the village 285 300 watts um for 37k but if we actually just get on the climb um, sorry, that was I messed it up. Uh, but just on the flat part, um, when they got to Majev, it was about 260 watts, 270. Watts. So this is like high tempo. It will help by this point for sure. But the thing is, you're realizing they're burning a thousand kilojoules an hour at this rate. So you know, on this climb, he's burning 650 kilojoules in half an hour. So to put that back in the system and having the 
the ability to do that obviously you can't put that back in the system but you know having the that shows you how like low it is on their exertion because obviously if they were going max they you know they they blow up but like they are able to you know go at a low enough tensity so they can burn enough fat because obviously the carbs they can burn is just fixed more or less all they they can put back in so they're like this is a low enough intensity that they can just keep going at this pace which is unbelievable really when you think about it um obviously the descent is little kill jewels but still then this is the final climb Majev to alti port five percent six and a half k um and kenny Alson went early if you'd watch the stage and kenny Alson went david la cruz was the first to respond then you had michael kwiatkowski and leonard kemner riding together um they were riding pretty solid as you can see six watts per kilo um on this part uh, 400 normalized um and leonard kemner then drops kwiatkowski around this point here you can see some of the surges what he's doing he then bridges up to the final break um power starts to ease off around around this spike here just before it you'll be able to see you know he's doing 330 obviously that's might not really be easing off for everyone but it is for him then he launches it big boy time and that's it cheerio after that he's he's gone um obviously it looks like he stopped pedaling that was actually because it was a hairpin you see it around this corner here there was a hairpin um but yeah so that was 375 watts so six watts per kilo for six, six minutes but if we look at the whole the whole climb 13 minutes at six watts per kilo more or less obviously normalized it's a bit higher that's why i'm saying six watts per kilo plus i think it's power me it might be slightly under reading um six watts per kilo for 13 minutes is crazy really to be honest i think most people can't do six watts per kilo for 13 minutes fresh um, you'd think you're quite talented, I'd say. I think most people, if they, go, if they hit six watts per kilo for 13 minutes, you know, you're doing 5.7, 5.8, maybe for 20 minutes. You're pretty good at riding bike for sure. He does that after 4,200 kilojoules of work on stage four, and I think this ride was really, really, really impressive by Lenny Kemner and um, super, super solid, solid day out for him. Um, and you know, really, really impressive ride from the big man. Uh, and definitely uh, definitely allowed to watch another one of these bore blokes who can climb they seem to have unlimited numbers of them uh, and then we'll look into the last stage which again it is is also probably one of my favorite stages as well um to analyze it was won by sep kuss i'll go through this first but basically sep kuss got up the road with loads of other people uh, sorry with loads of other people um so you can see there's huge gaps here because lepchenko kashaviejo they were all in the peloton but there was a big not big up mark Don, that's a huge ride uh, but anyway, there was a big, big um, group up the road. Then Sivakov and uh, Alphilip. Oh, actually, we'll go into Fala and then we'll, we'll explain. Um, again, I'm not 100 percent sure about the numbers, but they look pretty right to me. So 59 kilos FTP 374. That sounds about right for an outrageous climber. 324 normalized for four hours and a half. Four and a half hours is good for anyone, no matter what your weight is, especially when you're 59 kilos and especially stage five, as we already mentioned. Kilojoules, 4,300, pretty solid day out for four and a half hours of work. 1,000 kilojoules an hour is pretty crazy, or more or less. Um, but we'll go into the into the power stage. So if you didn't know, they started up here. The first descent, they neutralized because they were angry about the descent the day before. This meant everyone was very fresh, and they launched it big time on this climb. 23k an hour on a 9% climb is big boy stuff. Uh, 7.4 watts per kilo, you get a... Five minute peak of 7.6 watts per kilo. JB the watts per kilo chart is almost at the top. So it was unbelievable for performance um, to get into this breakaway. Like only the elite of the elite would get in this breakaway. Um, and I think other people like Castro Rivera getting in is pretty pretty impressive. But even so, this was a crazy, crazy stage. So straight away out the gates, you've got to be able to climb super fast that he does. So, you know, fastest, fastest and up route the measure. Then it's sort of flat thrown off. 280 290 normalized for 15 60 minutes that is recovery for that these boys it's you know probably high zone two no it would be like zone three for him uh low zone three um then we come to the first the, the biggest climb of the day the coal the home uh which is 19k sorry 8.6 kilometers at nine percent so pretty steep um if you take out the first part it gets a little bit steeper it's no, no, i was about to say nine percent 380 watts so again climbing 6.4 watts per kilo um, I think these towers are too high because I think actually no, it's not 18 and a half k an hour at nine percent. Maybe is, is about right. Maybe it's a little bit lower, but it's climbing at least six watts per kilo over the next half of 26 minutes. And this is really like, again, as I said, big boy stuff. Like you know, you can't be you know, oh I'm more right, I come you know, top 30 in the tour. This is like elite stuff. Um, but it was surprising the break was still pretty big despite this. Um, so that was a super solid performance by him. Then 
quick sort of descent, then the Cordo Colombier. Um, and again, this is when the attack started to go, as you can see here on this part here. Uh, 700, 800 watts, on it's crazy to attack and be able to ride a three, still 6 watts per kilo-ish on the climb. Uh, but yeah, this is when Alaphilippe and Sivakov were left. Um, so I assume this is when he, when he was trying to get into into that group, didn't make it, um, and then just rode steady 6 watts per kilo-ish, 5.5 to 6 watts per kilo, something like that. Obviously, power data is always very little bit. But again, super impressive. And then next climb, uh, they were... Still behind, nothing much happening. So this is when they really started to pull Wout Van Aert and a lot of the other David de, de la Cruz and Sebastian Reichenbach were pulling very hard to get them back. So he's not doing anything. He had the Moulin with him, but you know, not no nothing. Uh, no obligation to chase. Route de Megev. Again, he then this is the favourites group. So we had Sivakov and Alaphilippe up the throne. People started attacking minute one. Pagatra was there. Um, Danny Martinez was there. Um, and Kuss got a got across, so you can see 422 watts for 7 minutes 15 against over 7 watts per kilo for 7 minutes. Very, very solid. Um, and this was super impressive, 450 watts, so almost similar power to what he did at the very beginning of the stage. You know, after all of that, again, super impressive. 20k an hour for 10% climb. Just try and do that. Find a 10% climb, ride 20k an hour. It's hard, <laughs> really, really hard. So again, he's riding super strong to get across to the lead contenders, so he's then, he's with, uh, like, um, Kuss is with, sorry, Pagaccia, Danny Martinez, Lopez gets in there, Sivakov is, stays there as well, Alphilippe got dropped from the breakaway. We then have this next climb, again, more attacks by Sivakov, you can see the massive, massive surges here, up to almost a thousand watts, which is pretty solid for a small lad, um, but they all stayed together again. They then started riding towards Majed, and this is, uh, the similar ish climb to the Alti port, so some parts were the same. So, this descent here, but they didn't come straight from Mejev. So, last time they came up here, um, this time they came a slightly different route. So, it's a longer climb um, and slightly steeper. Again, you can see a lot of a lot of attacks early on um, 334 watts. There's a lot of attacks here, but I believe um, I was trying to remember exactly where it was, but I, I, I couldn't really. Um, but I think the, the final attack was done. Uh, about here um so there's sort of a slowing here um oh sorry this is it yeah pagatcha pagatcha had attacked then Sivakov went for it and then kus counted over the top and just went for it and just soloed home he had oh no that can't be it sorry he went from about 8k out so it could have potentially been now it would have been further than this it's really hard to find his power data and i've looked and trying to figure out when it was and no one seemed to actually know where it was I think it was slightly further out than this, but anyway, he, the last climb he rode again um, at about six watts per kilo, and he has the KOM. It's a different segment, as I said, to the to the last one, but it's just an unbelievable day. Uh, Twenty minutes, almost six watts per kilo at the end of the day. After how many four thousand kilojoules? I mean, that's what makes people world class. But it's not four thousand kilojoules because it's not four thousand kilojoules of riding at tempo. It's four thousand kilojoules of ridiculous seven watt per kilo. Um, seven minute climbs which are so much harder for most people physiologically than riding a tempo up a climb like right this riding 311 watts you'd be like nose breathing like you know and an unbelievable performance by Seth Kurs again the level that he is at I think is you know ready to win a grand tour for sure um it, I'm not sure about his TT TTing but pff, crazy I, I hadn't seen a performance like that in a long time uh just based on the pure fact that he dusted off people who were Going pretty well, uh, Pagacha, Sivakov, and Danny Martinez, and he did it so easy as well. That climb, like, you know, it, it's a fast climb, and they were swapping turns. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll go. We'll, we'll finish the Strava analysis. We'll just go over to like what I think this means for the tour. Um, I think it changes any our strategy. They basically realize Burnout can't. Burnout's going to lose sprints to Roglic. Okay, they need to make it harder earlier on, but they don't have the team to do it. So I think they're going to have to really like make sure that. Um, Garrett Thomas is up there on the GC and exploit that, and I think that's the only tactic they have, to be honest. Um, we saw other people, uh, Pino looked good, uh, Bookman obviously looked good, I don't know if he's going to do, he's got hematoma in his lung, that's not ideal. He might be able to recover, but, you know, having a hematoma is definitely, is definitely going to damage him. Um, Dumoulin looked decent, nothing crazy, not going to win at all, but, you know, he can um, definitely help Roglic. Roglic looked a million dollars, but has he peaked too early? Um, he also obviously had challenges, but he didn't have anyone like really on the same level as him at all. Um, but maybe that's the way it will be. I'm not sure. 
Yates looked okay. Richie Port, I thought, actually looked good. Obviously, this stage doesn't look ideal on the GC. He like lost a lot of time, but just on the final stage, but he was climbing pretty well. Um, Buggy looks pretty solid. Quintana pulled out the stage. Um, he had some knee issues. He had got hit by a car, a stupid car idiot, um, earlier on the season, well, in quarantine. Uh, so I don't know about him. Sivakov again looks solid. Rigobos are around, looks pretty average. I don't really rate him. I think he's gone past it, but no one seems to ever say that about EF because everyone seems to like them. Um, who else was there? Gannett Thomas. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't, don't think they have it, to be honest, as boys. I think it's going to be a, a Roglic win, I think. Um, I Again, it's hard to say Bogacha could be coming. He, he looked better and better all season. Um, but he, like as the stage went on, he looked better and better. Miguel Lopez, I mean, it's like he seems to be very random. He, he again, was riding into it, so hard to say. Um, but it's really hard to look past Primoz Roglic, to be honest. Uh, whatever your thoughts are, let us know below. If you like these videos, let me know. If not, see also let me know. Because we can, we can change it up. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. And we'll see you in the next one.